<clears throat> so little. I'm gonna have to like turn and put my arms back. <laughs> Hi, welcome uh, to Fuzzy Tales on this. What is today? June nineteenth. <laughs> um, <laughs> It's our first time in front of the cameras and we're still trying to get used to it. So we've got the giggles. This is like when I got married to Ray and they made us stare at each other and I couldn't stop laughing. My God, I've only even had one sip. Okay. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, so thanks for joining us. This is Fuzzy Tales. I'm Amy. And I'm Beverly. And uh, we're really excited. It's a new you know, video blog that we're going to be doing, featuring and focusing on news, our lives, um, all that good stuff, right? Right. So we're really excited to um, be here with you and share our lives and, um, you know, definitely just to uh, let you know that you're not the only ones. It you're happens not. to everybody. <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things that I've done is recently, because my son is with his father, is I started watching this show, Dirty John, uh, the show about Betty Broderick and her oh, husband. I saw that. I saw Holy that too. Moses. So what did you think about it? Because what I thought about it was, first of all, Amanda Pete was great. Uh, like fantastic awesome. uh, she was it was a different role for her totally yeah not she was didn't look pretty right it was a very interesting role very uh dramatic but i, I you know for those that didn't watch it please watch it because it's a true story of betty and her husband ken broder yeah but i can't think of her husband's name i can't either um and he has an affair and all the things that happened after that and it sends her into a spiral of insanity. And it was hard. That was hard to watch. And she uh, kills him and his new wife. And I'll leave it at that. But I got to tell you, as a mother, uh, I think he, did he get what he deserved? You know, who knows? Who knows what somebody deserves? It was, um, he, he took a path that was very hurtful that I think almost any woman, married or not, could relate to. Um, you see your life heading in a certain uh, certain direction. And I, I think almost any woman can agree what he did was um, very hurtful and very damaging. Um, so I'll never say, did he get, you know, did he get what he needed or was it worth it? Um, I, but I do think it's a good good opportunity for something like this where we discuss things that happen and you're not the only one. You know, there were a lot of options for her that she didn't take. Um, so it's a catch-22. Um, but it was, I think a lot of women were pulling for her probably would be my guess. Well, yeah, and the, the first time we went to trial, it was acquitted. It was a hung jury. And then the second time was went to trial. I mean, she's still serving time in, in prison for it. And uh, I gotta tell you, I've been thinking like, I wanna write her a letter because I can understand the insanity that when it comes to your kids, your money, your livelihood, uh, that's all she knew yes. was being a mother and, and being a, a wife and all of that was taken from her. And he showcased this young, you know, blonde bombshell. That's enough to drive a lot of people over the edge. I hope that I would figure out a different way uh, but I can honestly tell you, if you've ever been married, you think about killing your spouse every <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> I've never been married, but I still have those thoughts. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, for anybody, it's a true story. It's pretty fascinating. Uh, the way it's written, the way it kind of showcases everything that goes on with her, with Betty. Uh, it's it's two thumbs up for me. Yes, definitely. Um, she's recommended it. I've talked to other people about it who've watched it. And there's another one. There's another show that's very similar, but about a different couple. So this is the Dirty John, Betty Broderick story, um, just to be to be clear. So um, other than that, how's your week? 
Week is good, right? So uh, coming off of vacation last week always puts you in a tailspin. Um, a, if you go to the beach and have a lot of fun, it's hard to get back and work. Also, the pounds peck on when I go to the beach, even if I eat fish for dinner. Uh, but the consumption of wine and, and cocktails does not. Well, I think I was telling you earlier, speaking of fish, just switching gears real quick, that I'm, you know, on this perpetual diet after 50. So um, I'm using a product, Noom, N-O-M, N-O-O-M or Nom, I'm not sure how you say it. So it's probably, ooh, like phonetically, mm, right? <laughs> so like Zoom, no, ooh, yeah, zoom, ooh. Ooh. I like that. No, ooh. I'm on the um, But anyway, <laughs> So I had a lot of calories left. So it's a calorie counting, among other things. So I looked up salmon. Salmon's great, right? It happened to say it was like 400 calories. So I was like, Ooh. That so, sounds so high. I don't know if I believe that. I don't either. But, you know, I used it as a tool, made me make a different um, choice. So I got a salad with chicken, um, which is really, really good. Well, that's good because there's not that lot of chicken to be had. Um, so <laughs> glad, I'm glad they found a piece of chicken. <laughs> I mean, seriously, chicken, there's a shortage. Um, when we were on that beach trip, I went to go get my son some chicken tenders, which as we all know, public says the, the best, best pub, yeah, chicken tenders. Oh my God. I can eat those quite, quite often. Uh, but it said right there on the sign when I went to go get it, due to the shortage, um, they have no chicken tenders. That's crazy. Where was this again? It was in Clearwater. Jeez. So um, I don't understand. I mean, I think it's some of the hacking, right? That went on to the meat plant, I believe. Um, but overall, groceries are very expensive. There's shortages happening. And it just causes concern. You know, the amount of money we spend, groceries has, has skyrocketed during the pandemic. It just feels, I feel... I don't know, did the grocery stores take advantage of the American uh, situation, right? There was restaurants were closed. And so we had to go to the grocery store for our food or is it the is it the pipeline of food? Is that that supply chain that got broken down due, due to hackers? Um, I don't know. I don't either. I have my theories, but I'll keep those to myself. <laughs> um, but it's very disturbing. It's the first time in my life that I remember things being this bad. I'm sure there's been little things or maybe when I was younger that I didn't realize, but this is, um, it's very disturbing. It might mean that I have to become a vegetarian. If you know me, I'm a meat and potatoes kind of girl. Yeah, yeah. I mean, me too, I'm from Iowa. I mean, we eat pork and beef and chicken um, more than anything. Like, well, I still to this day build my meals around my meat. Yeah, exactly. So you if I'm going to have chicken, what are my chicken sides? If I'm having salmon, what are my salmon sides? So that would look very different for me. Uh, and you don't want to re rely on pasta when you're getting rid of the meat, right? You want to rely on, on other things. So I think it will be hard. The only thing I ever remember about food shortages like this was like when there was that uh, foot mouth. Remember that when yeah. the beef foot mouth thing happened and so there's a shortage of beef. But I've never heard of chicken uh, and shortages. So mad cow disease. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, it's not going to help our grocery bills. That's for sure. So yeah, eat a sweet potato and you'll be fine. Yeah. I've become a cauliflower cra uh, crazy lately. I like the versatility with it. It does have a smell. Um, but speaking of which, my friend, um, so sweet and she always has food for me when I dog sit um which she doesn't have to but it always makes me happy it's a little package of riced cauliflower love it and it's on the shelf it's not frozen it's uh, just like rice you know how you can steam rice right so you open the packet put it in the microwave for 90 seconds and it doesn't smell bad and for the most part it's um you know, a lot of the water is not in it, but you can just steam it or you can actually put it in a pan and kind of, you know, not really fry it up, but just sort of pull some more moisture out of it. And um, so I, that was awesome. 
So I got to tell you, I just recently did this. So I got a, um, from the freezing frozen section, I got this package of cauliflower, rice cauliflower, and I made salmon the other night and I took the cauliflower and I just heated it up and for, you know, to get, not have it be frozen. And then I put it olive oil in the pan, kind of like Elizabeth used to do yes. and put salt and pepper and just kind of get, get rid of the moisture. That's it. I didn't want Yeah. Uh, and then I put it with salmon and Brady said, my son, uh, what is this? I said, it's rice. And he ate some and he said, this is delicious. Next time, can you make more? I said, I can, I can. It was Good green, job, Mom. It, it was green giant. That's what it was, green giant in the frozen section. I loved it. So it was good. And we didn't have rice, right? Nothing wrong with rice. But if you want to try to lose weight and cauliflower is one of the, I got to, my next thing I'm going to do with cauliflower is make like, um, I'm going to make buffalo cauliflower. Yeah. Have you ever I'm done that? A, I'm not a big buffalo fan, but anyone who's done it loves it. Okay. Well, that's um, going to be, that's going to be what I'm going to do soon. I think that would great be great for little parties and everything. Yeah. Right? You just stick it in the oven and make the sauce. Um, and you get that taste without the chicken that you can't find. Yeah. And that, I love it. <laughs> I just caught that. Um, <laughs> exactly. We'll show them. Huh? We'll just make cauliflower. Everything. Cauliflower, everything. I made my mom some cauliflower. She's not a big cauliflower fan. She hasn't really eaten it. So now I've looked at almost anything you can do with it. So I cut it into steaks. And you know, so it's it's a little bit of an ordeal. You don't get that many steaks. So I cut them, just laid them down on a parchment sheet in the oven and whatever the instructions were. And then olive oil, salt and pepper, blah, 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 whatever you want to put on it. And then I finished it up with um, Parmesan cheese mm. at the end and kind of let it melt with the, um, with the heat, with the um, whatever. <laughs> broiler ah. um so with the broiler and she fell in love oh. with it she felt was she that was, your main dish or a side dish and we were just playing we were playing with it so i mean it's a big meaty piece however big yeah i know what you're talking about i've seen that before yeah. like this big yep i never thought about that but it's you know it takes some talent to make that happen but uh she loved it i riced it up um, I have not had a chance to make the mashed potato, the mashed version for her, but she was happy. So make me happy. That's good. No, I love it. I, I love the, all the ways you can make pizza, make buffalo wings. You can do a lot of stuff with it. So move over chicken. But totally. It's the new chicken. <laughs> What's it taste like? Chicken. What's it taste like? Cauliflower. <laughs> yes, I agree. Well, that's the end of our first session on Fuzzy Tales. Uh, we're excited. It's going to get yes. better as each episode goes on. We we can watch get, a square. While we get used to this whole uh, platform, looking, getting the right lighting, getting the right outfit. Um, Not fixing our hair. Right. You know, all this is like really hard when you're looking at yourself. It's hard to look at yourself all the time. And not want to fix yourself. So I know that we look kind of cute. Right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right, boys and girls. Till next time. Thank you for listening. Bye.